we're very good in Australia at starting a conversation and hoping someone else might be able to finish mm -hmm. it off for us. Yeah. So I've decided that uh, that's not going to happen. I'm going to, I'll be the one that does it. Welcome to Beyond the Beers. Men breaking the stereotype through conversation. We men love a good yarn, some banter, even better over a beer or tea. Sadly for many men, it never goes deeper than that. This show is a place for men to go beyond the surface level conversations, a chance to learn, listen, laugh and grow. I'm your host Mike Campbell, man coach and author of Amazon bestseller for men's health, Unleash Your Alpha. Let's break stereotypes through conversation, let's go beyond the beers. Today we are coming to you live from the Triple M radio station studios here in Sydney. That is because I'm sitting here with Mr. Gus Warland. Now Gus, uh, probably more commonly, is one of the hosts on the Triple M breakfast show, The Grill Team, in the mornings. But more recently, he's the brains, face and passion behind a TV series of his own creation called Man Up, which is quite simply summed up as one man's mission to save Aussie blokes. I was blown away by the show and I want to honour Gus for putting his weight and passion and influence into bringing this conversation into the public forum. So thank you for doing that, Gus, and thanks for coming on the show. It's my pleasure, thanks for Let's having me. Let's crack into it, eh? Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for the beer. No worries. It is um, quarter past nine in the morning, though. <laughs> look, well done on Man Up. Great stuff. Great thank stuff. you. I, I, when I first spoke to the people about it and putting it all together, I didn't quite realise how much it was going to affect me and how much it was going to resonate with the Australian people. My life has changed so much for the better yeah. and um, yeah, I'm just very lucky that I got the gig. So can you um, elaborate on that a little bit? Talk us through the journey that you personally went on through the filming and then the airing of the show. Well I think initially it started off um, with me losing a friend of mine 10 years ago last Friday actually and for years being angry with him, for years basically sticking my head in the sand and not quite ever educating myself yeah. on perhaps why he did it. Yeah. Yeah. So once I started launching into that and I realised that Aussie men are just awesome at sort of putting a mask on, mm -hmm. um, we're very good at just bullshitting ourselves and bullshitting people around us to saying, hey, we're cool, I've got everything covered, I don't need any help, being very stoic. So for me, it was a very personal journey. Yeah. Ten days into filming, I realised that I couldn't do a lot for Angus but I could do something for my son who was 16, just at the start of those horrible stats that we have yeah. in Australia. The number one way to lose your life in Australia from 15 to 44 year old man is suicide. And that's where we learn to kind of thicken that mask as well, right? Absolutely, exactly yeah. right. We're continually told just to man up, we're continually told to just suck it up and get on with it. Yeah. Um, so I said, well, okay, I can't do anything about Angus, but I've learned enough to perhaps help my son and his mates. So it became this mission, if you like, on how do I make sure that my son Jack's okay? And then by the end of it, it was such a long process over a year. By the end of it, it was like, okay, well, if I can show an example, then perhaps a whole lot of other Aussie blokes yeah. might sit there, resonate and go, right, well, if Gus can do it, then I might be able to do it. And that was, that was really cool. Very nice, respect. Thank you. So then your own conversations, how have your own conversations changed or maybe just been affected in terms of the content you've been delving into? I definitely think they've changed. If you ask my friends, they'd say it's changed. Yeah. I'm a bit more of a pain in the ass now. <laughs> I won't accept fine. I won't accept I'm okay, buddy. I won't accept, oh, look, I'll talk about that another time. Yeah. I'm sort of really conscious that in the moment that I'm trying to be the best possible mate as possible. So how do you approach that? I think the only way you can, which is like balls up, Hands, hands on shoulder, look someone in the eye, connect and say, how are you? Are you going okay, mate? Yep. And most blokes will say, I'm fine. It's the first mm. lie that Absolutely. most of us learn. Yep. So I just go, mate, no matter what, let's deal with whatever we're dealing with. Whatever resonates, I think, and works for you. Right? That's it doesn't it. need to be a template or a mould, but something where there's some space for conversation. That's it. And so what I'm getting there is a lot of you genuinely asking and actually challenging guys to not just say, I'm fine. You know, for a lot of us men, we haven't really learnt to experience our emotions and deal with well, them. We've been told all our life to, to not show that emotion, yeah. be stoic and And so when we it. push something down, and we always do this, but it does happen, we push it down, the body remembers and it stays there, and it will come out in some way. Adios flying off the handle because you put something down the wrong way or whatever yeah. it is, right? You, you fly off the handle with something that seems so ridiculously easy yeah. and simple, but it's a build up of the hundred things that you've shoved yeah. down. And 
that's what makes our ladies or our partners or our friends not understand. It's like, yeah. you're losing the plot, you're getting worried over that. It's like, it's not that, it's that, 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 that's been gone back three or four months or years in some yeah. men's cases. It, it adds up, right? Of course it does. And we need to have a valve that we just let the pressure off. And yeah. every conversation I have with my mates now is a little loosening of the pressure valve. Absolutely. The other problem I think with men that I've worked out, and I used to do it myself, is that we always try to fix things. So mm -hmm. if we you do. told me you had a problem, as you're talking to me, I'm not exactly listening to every word because I've got the gist of what you're saying and I'm just waiting for you to stop so I can go, let me tell you how you can get better. Yep. So I've learned and I'm trying to learn, I'm still getting as the hang I. of it, as the listening um, and the, you're not a nail, I'm not a hammer. So yes. I can't just fix you simply. It needs to yep. be um, a situation where I listen, 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 listen and say, look, I've got no advice yep. for you except to say, thank you for sharing and I hope you feel better for doing it. Yeah. And then at least you've had the conversation. It might have yeah. That might be all you need. And it doesn't need to be the most earth shattering, deep, serious conversation. No. It's something that just a bit beyond the surface, right? Exactly. And I think the important word you said earlier was trust as well. We, we need to know that we're safe. Yes. And so it's the listener's responsibility to, pr to provide that. But as the sharer, you might need to ask, mate, I'm shit scared about talking about something. Can you listen and help me out? Okay, we've, we've spoken a lot about conversations between people, right? What about the internal conversation? Because obviously one of the more important conversations we have on a daily basis is the one we have with ourselves, right? Yeah. So do you find yourself up in your head a lot, as many of us guys do? Yeah. Um, and, and if so, you know, what is that kind of internal dialogue for you? I tend to be pretty easy on myself. Yeah. <laughs> I think most blokes, you're either really writing yourself, you know, and way too much, yeah. or we're way too easy on ourselves. I think blokes find it really hard to get the balance. Yeah. I think the conversations that most men have in their head are ones that we can't actually do that much about. Yeah. We're just worrying about things that we can't control. Yeah. So, so worrying about things in the future perhaps as opposed to being Of course. Present. And also worrying about what someone might have thought of you yep. or say about you. Um, then I've got no control over what people think. So when think. it's that voice that's a bit more on the being hard on yourself perhaps or, or maybe heading towards being detrimental, you can recognise and and now I can, now I can. I was that guy that went, look, I can cope. What, what, you know, I don't need any anyone to tell me what to do. I'll, I'll be right. I've got to this place. Okay, why do I need it someone else? Yeah. But of course, you know, this now I'm 48 nearly, um, and I've got three teenage kids. I'm a very different bloke to the bloke that perhaps handled things in his 20s or even yeah. his 30s, um, and we've got to recognise that that I've got issues now that I didn't have 20 years ago, yeah. and how am I best going to deal with them? Well talking to myself up here, that is not the answer. I've worked that out. Yeah. And and speaking to balance again, you know, obviously for men, you know, it's that thing, the mask is about strength and resilience and all that stuff, which mm. are very important characteristics. But yeah. it's finding that balance between being strong and, and self-reliant, yeah. self-sufficient, and being pig-headed and you know what, this is probably not serving you anymore, right? Exactly. I mean, people say to me when I talk about this sort of new life that I'm, I'm trying to lead and is, um, you know, God, that just sounds like you're a sissy. It sounds like you're a this and a that. And, it's a, and, they, t and they call you names. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a position where you can't actually open your mouth and talk to anyone yeah. about you thinking about ending your life or you're thinking about making a huge change in your life, whether it's yeah. going to have an affair or do something wrong to get yourself out of a situation, try to do a shortcut somewhere. If you can't turn around to someone, even if it's a lifeline, complete stranger and talk to them, yeah. Well, that to me is weak. Yeah. You know, like the, the strong thing to do is actually recognise the issue and move on. I recognise that is a very difficult thing for a lot of Aussie blokes, which is why... Oh, it's changing the paradigm of vulnerability, right? Absolutely. Right. But vulnerab yeah. vulnerability for me is you're, you're making yourself vulnerable by not being talkative, yeah. not being open to discussing stuff. It's not easy. And I, wonder, yeah. and I understand why people don't talk about it, but we need to keep the conversation going and break it all down. Nice. Manning up is about... Um, being vulnerable, not not being stoic and, yep. and silent. Cool. So now I want to distinguish a little bit. Me asking you is fine. What about you sharing? So yeah. so for a lot of guys, I think a lot of things that we hold in are things that are you know sources of shame, perhaps, and guilt. Those are the things that we don't want to share. Mm. Those are the things that we get up in our in our head about. Yeah. So not necessarily any specifics, but do you find that you can recognize those feelings in you and, and maybe share them and address them? Yeah, and I, I think I've done that. There's a, 
there's a couple of couple of times in the last year or so where I've gone to see people that I know that I was a complete fuckwit. You know, at the time, yeah. I just fucked it. And I just wanted to have that moment and say, look, I'm, I, I, I just know now, that I recognise the fact that I was a dick. Okay, so and owning up to your shit. Absolutely. Perfect. Like, this is that fuck up night that was in the show. It's of like standing so. up and going, you know, I'm ticking some boxes here, here and here, but I fucked up here, here and here. And people sort of just applauding you and going, mm-hmm. good on you for getting it out. Yeah, so yeah. I went and saw a couple of people, put my hand up and they were like, what? Doesn't matter. What are you talking? It was years ago, I know, but I said I'm owning it now, yeah, and they're it was like, still oh, something that was okay, you. that's yeah, fine. Yeah. But it's like anything. Once you start talking about it out loud, it's never as bad. So yeah, yeah. I thought I was going to get a barrage going. Yeah, well, that has affected yeah. my life, or whatever. They're like, no, nah, that we we didn't see it that way. But yeah. it's what our head's telling us. You know, it's a very powerful. Those yeah. seven inches between the well, ears. Well, you were still holding on to it, and that's the key, right? If we are holding on to it, we probably need to address it. Yeah, and it might be some forgiveness of self. Yes. Um, and, and other things. But recognising it and having the conversation, that's the key, right? But I spoke to a mate of mine about that, and he said to me, well, why are you putting your shit onto them? And I'm going, well, I had to get rid of it. And he said, but that's selfish. Mm-hmm. You're actually wanting to get something off your chest that might bring up some bad memories for them that they have to then deal with. And I sort of sat, I've reson- that resonated with me yep. as well. Like, am I going to make myself feel better and actually upset someone else? Yeah. Um, I think that shows that there's no black or white. Right? It's a whole lot of grey. A whole lot of grey, but that's it. It's so important to recognise that. There's no yeah. magic pill, no magic solution. No. And you just got to treat everything, you know, as it comes kind of thing, right? Most blokes like to have black and white. <laughs> yes and no. Yeah. We don't like the grey area. We want a winner and a loser. We want a champion. We want, a, we want evil. We want good. Um, and that's why perhaps um, talking about your feelings and stuff is so difficult for us because yeah, yeah. we... Uh, we're going to places that don't give any absolute definites. Yeah, that's great. Because we're fixers. We, we want a solution. Yeah. Get it done. Move on. So wrapping things up, you know, we are here today because of Man Up, right? Because we are two blokes who are passionate about getting men to open up a, a bit and 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 take ownership of our shit and and <laughs> actually, you know, go beyond the beers a bit. So, what's next? Obviously, Man Up for you. I, I talk about the bigger conversation. What's the bigger conversation you're having? So Man Up is kind of it, but what's next? And actually at the same time, how did it go? Like, did it meet your expectations? What went on there? So Man Up, in terms of, like expectations for me, I think the show itself was so much better than I expected it to be. The response has been out of control. Series two is in discussions. Um, The ABC have been really pleased with it. There's a few boxes to be ticked, but in terms of expectation, it was, we'll make a good show. I think we made a great show. Yeah. It's now worldwide. Millions of people are seeing it. I, I'm so proud of it. It's certainly the best thing I've ever done, and I want to continue doing it. Blokes like you, I didn't know before Man Up. Now I know you. There's another five or six people just like you who are just really cool people that are just get it, and yeah. that you can be. So, you, our voices have all got to be together to get it, it all out yeah, there. Yeah. So um, I can't stop doing it. We're very good in Australia at starting a conversation and hoping someone else might be able to finish it off for us. Yeah. So I've decided that uh, that's not going to happen. I'm going to I'll be the one that does it. And um, you know, I've got haven't got all the answers, but I've got some sort of solution to help in some way. So I'm just going to drive down that path. Try not to overcomplicate it. The only thing I remember mm-hmm. from uni is keep it simple, silly. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to try to do and you know, fingers crossed it'll work. Nice. Well, look, personally, I think you've done a great job, as, as I said at the start of the show. And personally, I also think it's, it's, it's crucial that men step up and provide examples. And I think one of the big things that we need as men with this stuff is permission. We need permission almost to give ourselves permission mm. to start having those conversations, yeah. be a bit more vulnerable and that kind of stuff. And, and, and that's why I think you know, guys like you stepping up in a very public space, it's great to see. Um, it makes you know my job and so on easier because more guys are willing to do that thing, yeah. right? So, so thank you for coming on the show, Gus. Thank you no absolutely for, for the work thank that you're you. doing and, and Man Up. I'm looking forward, obviously, to, to hearing more and seeing uh, Man Up Series 2, whatever that may be. Exactly right. Thank you. And that's our show, fellas. So thank you for tuning in. And remember, if you can take one thing from today, it is have the conversation. If you need to ask a mate, how he's really doing, then do that. Or if he just wants to go beyond the beers. 
click on the link below and go to beyondthebeers.tv. There you can sign in to watch the rest of the episodes for free as well as all the episodes of the show. Otherwise, make sure you share this episode with at least one man you think will enjoy or benefit from it. Now go out into your own life and start having these more meaningful conversations. Ask for help. Ask a mate how he's really doing. Or if he just wants to have a real conversation and go beyond the beers.